Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Chris with the CRC. Today, guys, we're going to be going over the Mad Van VE. Uh, we're going to be getting it ready for his first time use, so I'm quite looking forward to this. Um, I have had a little play about with it. Nothing major, just to give it a go, but it's, uh, should we say, wild. Um, but it's good news. Uh, Postman's been today and he has dropped off the upgraded parts we ordered. So we've got the Kyosho. HD Chrome gears. We're going to fit them to the car before we use it. I wanted to have a look at the depths and stuff like that and just see if um, I've got a way of going over my vehicles each time before I use them and I just wanted to go over that and just bit by bit make sure everything's all right. Top up the diffs. Um, I want to put those uh, Crown gears on. We'll check over a few other bits. I hope you enjoyed the SC video that I did uh, yesterday. As you can see, I am waiting at the moment for the Welsh weather to sort itself out. It's not very good here at the moment, but uh, it is what it is. There's not much I can do about that. So let's dive down at the table now, and we can go from there. Right, guys, so uh, Mad Van V, like I said, I've got a few things I want to check over on the car. Uh, part number you're going to need, if anyone does want to follow, is FA540-41, all right? And that's the metal ring gear. Uh, these are upgraded ones guys all right so we're going to pop them into the car i did want to check the diffs over as well but uh that's the actual part number there i don't know if your camera's picking that up but um there's a few th bits and bobs that i want to do on the car anyway just to check it all over and uh yeah we'll go from there but um i've got a i've got a way of doing these things all right and i like to make sure my cars are checked over so obviously we did the ESC in the previous video we checked the endpoints and also I programmed a little bit into the ESC um, but as far as mechanically wise what I tend to do is just go all over the car uh, screws and check out over everything's fitted in properly um, I check the diffs and, and basically go from there but uh, I think this is going to be an absolute blast to use. Um, I did have a little go on uh, 3S, just a quick blip. I want to say quick, I mean really quick. Um, out in the street, and I've got to say, guys, it is absolutely ludicrous. Um, but just want to go over the wheels and make sure everything's nice and tight and, and a few bits and bobs. So first things first, I think what we'll do... Uh, before anything else is obviously you are going to need some handy dandy drivers so what we're going to do here is get myself my electric screwdriver as you can see um, I also need you have to bear with me guys my hand tools uh, hex drivers I believe by the looks on things most of them are two millimeters so that's good um, we will probably going to need some grease, but for the moment, let's just see if we can dive in and go from there. Now, if you get stuck, guys, uh, just to let you know, obviously, um, there is a guide uh, and exploded view, basically, in the manual of the car. Um, so I would recommend you checking that over. But um, I am going to just dig in you and see it crack on. I'm going to pause the video two seconds because I just want to get my little ice cube tray to organize all my uh, hex screws and stuff. I'll come straight back now. Okay, so um, I'm with my glasses. I've got my my little ice cube tray to keep everything neat and tidy. I think the easiest one by the looks on things to do first is probably the front. So I'm going to take the shocks off, as you can see. The screws on the front of the shocks here. Um, let's have a quick look. By the looks on things, the shock tower, I might remove that. And there's one, two. By the looks on things, four screws on top. One, one, two, three, four. To actually get, get that out. So where's my drivers? <coughs> So we need a 2.5 for the front to get the shocks off and a two millimeter to get the screws out of the diff case. 
Let's take the shocks off first. So that's one. That's two. So as you can see, the suspension then drops away. So I'm going to change it out now, get my two, mil two millimetre. I believe we should be alright actually. I'm just going to check it over. Mm. That's one screw. Two. Okay, so they're quite long. Remember them, obviously. Got access yet? Nope. So what I'm probably going to do here is remove this top cover. Obviously, that will give us access to my ear then. And it looks like all the screws that come off this top cover are all the same. Uh, just check over that in a moment. Now, is this essential for first time use? Um, probably not but I do like to make sure everything's working properly and look guys all you're doing is basically prolonging the longevity of the vehicle so that's the, that plate come off as you can see all right I'm gonna put that aside and remember what you can do here is put all the screws back in there to know which ones are which I'm gonna do that just to know because obviously this is the first time I've taken the car apart. Uh, that one goes in there. That one goes in there. And we... Oh, one there. So, there you go. Okay. What you can do as well is the long ones that we took out from, from the rear here. Is maybe pop them through as well. So you know that all those apply. As you can see. All right. Okay, so two screws for the front of the diff cover, put them in there. And I did, I have no disc. There's two more screws here. And that should give us access now. Okay, so there. For the diff case and that has given us access to the diff happy days right okay so basically there you go guys the diff has just come straight out for me no issues at all just checking over um does seem like it needs a bit of grease bind Hey. Now the question is, how do you get these cups off? Do they all stay in one go? So, like I say, I'm doing this bit blind. Um, as you can see, there's absolutely zero grease on there between the crown gear and the um, uh, input gear of the dry shaft. And actually, yeah, so be careful because it does look like there is a little pin inside. I'm going to place that back inside actually. 
there's a little pin inside on the drive shaft guys and you don't want to lose that um absolutely zero grease in that gearbox but there you go so we're going to open this up now okay maybe i'll get some uh, cloth just to wipe that off a second bear with me okay Give it a bit of wipe down. Surprised how little is on there actually. Okay. So one, two, three, four, four screws on top. Let's move this over here a second. Got a screw there for the shock. That's come out. And there should be another one there somewhere floating about. That's one. That's two. I'll tell you what I'll do so you guys can see a little bit better. Is put some cloth down. There you go. One, two, three. Okay, so this def there you go, split straight open um not the worst i've seen there is some in there but it seems to have stuck to the side of the diff case rather than actually on the gears interesting okay now i want to change this out so how do i do this That's a good question actually. Is there a screw in there? No, it seems like a metal piece. Alright, what I'm gonna do is quickly pause the video and just try and work out how these actually come apart okay so bear with me right guys okay so I, I just wanted to check all right so that gear there actually comes straight off there's a little pin inside there you want to take that out all right and then your drive cups will come out I do need a pair of pliers mine but uh, Hopefully we'll be able to persevere you. Okay, there's one. And then, as you can see, the actual drive cap, that comes off. And then, as far as the centre goes, So there you go so that just pops off all right so that's the one that comes with it and I just want to check you because it does look like there's hardly any difference here at all Be being straight with you and these are the parts that were recommended to me hmm okay
not. So that's the, meant to be the upgraded one. All right. And that is the standard one. I can't actually see what the difference is here, but maybe I'm wrong. Well, that's the one that's been recommended. Just pop that back in, very easy, like so. We want to line the screw holes up, actually, bear with me. Okay. So that's back in now. Then you want to put your drive cup in. Like so. Then your plate. Like that. And then pop this little guide pin through. Like that. Okay. And then your gear on top. Like that. Uh, so that is that part done. Now, inside here, as you can see, our orbital gears. All right. So your plant trees are there, and these are your orbitals. So you want to take this out. Now, careful when you're taking this out, guys, because there are shims either side of it. So. On these orbital gears, I'll show you now. You have those little shims, as you can see. So I'm gonna place that one there. Then I'm gonna take my orbital. I'm gonna give all these a clean off now, and it's the same on the other side, and like so. So it's two washers, two orbitals. Okay. And then grease wise, as you can see inside, there wasn't a lot, guys. I don't know if the camera's picking that up. It's literally flung itself to the outside. So, what I'm going to do is clean all this out a second, all right, and then I'll come straight back to you in a moment and I'll show you uh, what we're going to do. Right, guys, so I've cleaned out the diff case, as you can see, there's no grease in there now, and to be honest with you, there wasn't actually a lot in there. As you can see, there's a little bit here. Um, it's not the worst I've ever seen, I'll be straight. But it's not the best either. Um, I'm not going to take this drive cup out. Because there's really, really no need to take the plant tree out. I have given it a clean with some cotton wool buds. That sort of thing. As you can see, all I've done is literally gone inside and cleaned all the case out. Um, we haven't run this yet, so it shouldn't be dirty. As you can see. That's actually giving it a wipe around the inside. Now, what we want to do here is pop a load of grease in. Now, not sure which one to go with here, to be honest with you. Um, I've got a choice of different greases. Um, I have got this bike grease. Um, now, I normally use this on my cars. Um, protector, it reduces friction and wear to bearings, moving parts, that sort of thing. Um, I think personally, either that or we're going to use some of the marine grease that I normally use. But um, I don't know. We'll just make a decision. So, two seconds, straight back. Right, okay. So, I've made a decision. Um, what I'm actually going to use is some of this either marine grease or bike grease for the outer input and crown. All right. So, we'll use those. But for the moment... For the actual gearbox, I've got some of this multi-purpose grease here. Um, because they're gears, I think that'll actually be absolutely fine, to be honest with you. So, just going to plough a load of grease inside there. As you can see, there's plenty in there now. It's a bit messy. Now, what we want to do here... Let me just keep my finger is make sure this is all clean which it is okay put your plant trees bearing in mind the plant trees face each other the actual the gear side of it guys as well all right one in there one in there and then you put your washers on the outside 
like so, one there, and then one on the other side. Okay, and that's how we should look. And then we're just gonna pop that in the diff case. Let me just make sure I go in the right place. And then push that down into the grease. Make sure it's sitting right down in there. And then all I'm gonna do then is top, top that up by there with a bit more grease. And that already feels much better. Right, okay. So that's how much grease I've put into, into it. As you can see, there's a hell of a difference. Covered all the gears, no problem. Um, now you can buy a seal kit for this to actually use diff fluids. For the moment, I'm gonna run it like this. Uh, it's got quite a thick amount of grease in there. Just place this on top now. Make sure you line up the screw holes. Now you might have some grease come out of the screw holes guys, look, as you can see. All right, don't panic. Get yourself your two millimeter driver. Now what you're gonna do is do these up in a, should we say, um, cross pattern. All right, so there's one, that's not all the way down, remember. Just make sure I got that in there. So you can clean the outside of this in a moment, guys. Two. Four. Now, these screws, what I would do now is tighten them two turns at a time, applying even force. One, two, three. Two turns at a time, remember guys. So opposites each other, remember. Like so. Okay, and now feels much, much better. Give the outside your diff case a bit of a wipe then. Like that. That's it guys. Easy peasy. Right, okay. What I'm gonna do now is quickly tidy up by your second. And then we're gonna um, Basically pop that in. I'm going to apply some grease. I'll, I'll stop the camera in a second and we can go from there. Right, one thing to mention you guys, all right, just so I, while I'm, I, I've got the trailer thought, is remember, as you're looking at your vehicle, all right, so as you're looking at your, your mad van, your crown gear wants to be on the right-hand side of how you're looking at the front of the car. Because otherwise what will happen is you'll have one diff wanted to go one way and one diff going another. Another thing, this little input gear at the front of the vehicle, I'll see if I can get the camera to come down here a second, bear with me. 
can you see that there so the way where the actual input gear is all right by there there is a shim behind it all right make sure you don't lose that shim guys it's quite quite important so i'm just going to move you back a second like so hopefully you can see me again right make sure you put your dog bones back in obviously so that otherwise you'll have no drive The other thing is, what I will say you in mind is, it's a pain in the backside having these shocks flapping around. So, in hindsight, what I might do in the future is just re uh, remove the shocks off completely. Okay, so we should be, there you go. That's one, and then that's two. There you go. Okay, so now you can actually hold it together and you can feel the difference here. There's a hell of a lot more resistance going on there. So what I'm going to do now, all right, is I'm going to get my my um, Teflon grease. I'm just going to place that on the input gear and the crown gear. Give it a pretty good coverage. Right, pick the car up again like we did last time. And just run. Like so. And then, when you open it back up, there should be plenty of grease all over the vehicle. Okay. I'm just going to sew this back up now and go from there. Right, okay, so that's the front all sewn back up. Uh, basically put all the screws back in, checked over, checked them all over. And uh, it does seem like it's a lot better in that sense. Um, there is more resistance on the front end. Uh, this back end, uh, what I'm going to do now is quickly undo it. Uh, I'll do a time lapse a second, guys, all right? Basically, so I'm not taking up your time. But... Um, what you need to do is remove the screws here on top of the motor uh, which will expose the pinion gear and spur uh, looking at it then there is one two and i think three four five six screws there so quite easy to get at and obviously you remove the shocks all right guys so that one not as bad as last time a um, little bit more grease but uh, and there was a little bit more grease around the input and crown gear so I'm gonna give that a bit of a wipe down a second um, and what we're gonna do here so that's the one that just come off the car we we'll replace it with the other I'd be honest with you um, unless someone has sold me parts that don't apply. Um, I can't really see much of a difference here, being straight with you. But, you know, what do I know? What do I know? So we're going to pop this gear. Um, if if there is a different part, guys, um, please let me know in the comments. Because I did a bit of research and I thought that this was the right one. Um, maybe it's not. Maybe I've got the wrong one. I don't know. But uh, we'll find out, I suppose. I'll have to excuse my dog barking, guys. OK. 
Okay, so the disc goes on top, the shim, like so. Pin goes in. And your planetary gear goes on top. So apparently, that's upgraded. Who would have known? Okay, so I'm just going to clean out as I did last time. Let's just get my piece of paper I've been using. So I don't like to mix grease. Yeah, as you can see, there's a, there, there was a bit more in this one actually, to be honest with you. Not terrible at all. Okay, so that's clean enough for me. I can move this over there a second. All right, I'm going to reapply my grease back inside here. This was nice and uniform. Pop my gears back inside. Make sure you give it a good push down. And that is actually plenty of grease in it. And this guys, when you're not using diff fluids, in my opinion, is enough grease. Not what they had in there. So I'm now going to place this back on top of here, make sure I've got my screw holes. And then we're just going to sew it back up. Remember what I said guys, screw it down so far and then we're going to do them in a cross pattern. So one, two, three, four. Now, as I say, don't panic if, it, if you think there's too much grease in it. More grease is better than no grease. I did think it was a little bit unusual, the Kyosho, to be honest with you, to use grease in the diff rather than actually 
um, diff fluids. Bearing in mind this car is capable of running 3S. So a bit of an odd design cue. Um, I know that you've had not acknowledged that and you can actually buy the gasket so you're able to run diff fluids. Uh, that's something I'm probably going to do in the future. But then again, to be honest, you know, I'm not racing it. At the end of the day, it's, um, this is a light basher for me. Okay. Give out a bit of a wipe down. Miles better. Miles, miles, miles better. Right. I'm not going to bore you with sewing it back up, guys, a second. All right. So what I'm going to do now, a sec, pause the video. And the next time you'll see me is when we're talking about the car. Right, guys. So that's the back of the car all sewn up. And I've got to be honest, the diffs do feel a lot better. As you can see, there's more resistance. Um, so yeah, that's a good thing. Now, all I'm going to do now is check over the car. Just basically give it a little bit of a wipe down as well where I might have got some grease on it. Um, what I'm going to do is basically just go over with a 2mm screwdriver. Now, we don't need to do any of these screws here because we've done all them. Just want to check that all the screws are neat, neat and butted up properly. And the reason why I'm doing this is to make sure before we run the car, nothing comes loose when we start using it. Um, what's my overall thoughts of doing the diffs? Well, very, very easy to be honest with you. Um, I might change it for the four gear because there is a four gear option for this car. Um, as far as running the car, I, I, obviously, I. I haven't really bashed it yet, so I can't tell you. So all the screws, as you can see, I've checked them all over on the bottom just to make sure they're all tight. No problems there. Uh, shock ends. Yeah, they seem to be okay. That one's okay. That one's all right. These arms, very, very thin, mind I've noticed. Right, okay. I think we're pretty much done. Just checking over any screws that I can actually see that are visible. Just making sure they're all tightened up neatly. You don't want to go too much with them. I would recommend just using a hex driver rather than a power tool, just in case you round anything off. Bear in mind you haven't even used the car yet. Okay, last ones for the wheelie bar. Seems to be all good so far, I'll be honest with you. So now all that's left to do is I'm going to pop the spoiler on the body and then once once I've done that this weekend I think we're going to get out with it guys but uh, oh I have got my adapter for my EC5s now on there as well so that's good. Um, as far as those gears go I can't actually see a difference but it's nice to know that I have got some spares anyway so hey ho. Um, We've done all the ESC calibration. Shocks seem decent. I might put some thicker. Might put some thicker uh, shock oil in the rear. But um, yeah, all good. I'll see you up, up top. Right, guys. So as you see, very very easy to do actually. To be honest with you, um, as far as upgrades go, I don't know whether that's an upgrade. Whether I've been given a, a the wrong part, I will check the the numbers on the packets against the actual upgrades um, but I got those numbers from Kyosho so possibly they're right 
Unless the only thing I think of is the VE does actually have the upgrades. But well, I'll check over that anyway, and I'll, at least I got some space. But easy thing to do. Checked all over the screws. We've done the ASC. We've done the diffs. There isn't anything else but to do now than actually run the car. So um, probably in the next video you're going to see is me actually hooning it a little bit uh, around on a field somewhere. So uh, thank you very much for watching the video. I know it was a bit of a long one this time, guys, but uh, I suppose when it comes to differentials, it's worth it. Um, remember to like if you do like the video and check the box uh, to check out any more videos on the channel, guys. Till next time, stay safe.